a thin layer. This small planet, blue like no other known, has one more thing that no other known planet has: life. And both blue and life are only on this Earth because of a thin layer that surrounds the planet. It's the atmosphere, which contains the air we breathe. At 500 kilometers from the Earth's surface, it is already possible to find its signals in the layer called the exosphere. Underneath is another layer with many electrical particles and high temperatures, the ionosphere that protects us from deadly cosmic rays. That's where the beautiful phenomena of aurora borealis occurs. Further down in the mesosphere, shooting stars are formed, meteors that are set on fire by friction with the air. In the stratosphere is the ozone layer, which filters ultraviolet radiation that is lethal to life. It is only much closer to the Earth's surface that we find the part of the atmosphere where life can exist and where air is breathable, the troposphere. It's really a thin layer. If the Earth was only one meter high, the breathable part of the atmosphere would be less than one millimeter thick. It is no wonder that in order to climb Mount Everest with its seven kilometers of altitude, climbers need to carry oxygen to breathe. Few species can live there. On the contrary, at lower altitudes, such as those occupied by dense tropical forests, life proliferates exuberantly. If we were to reduce our size a thousand times, we would see the water droplets that form the fog. A few more million times, and this reduction would allow us to perceive molecules that make up the air. Seventy-eight percent of air is composed of an inert gas, nitrogen. Oxygen, which living things breathe. Makes up over 20% of the atmosphere. The so-called noble gases, such as argon, helium, and xenon, make up less than 1% of the air. Carbon dioxide makes up less than 0.04%, and even then, if that small amount increases too much, it could affect the climate and life on Earth. There is also a portion occupied by water in the form of steam. Which varies according to local climate, the time of day, and the environment in which it is found. When its concentration increases or air cools, the water condenses and precipitates in the form of serene, rain, sleet, or snow. But the atmosphere wasn't always like this. Begins with a big explosion. Galaxies are formed, among them the Milky Way. It is there that our planetary system emerged around a small star, the Sun. After millions of years of cooling. The Earth's crust was forming. The molten rocks and volcanic eruptions expelled various gases, which gave rise to a primitive atmosphere. It was basically composed of carbon dioxide, sulfur oxide, nitrogen, and water vapor. But there was a decisive fact in this story, which changed the fate of the planet forever. The emergence of the first living beings, among them primitive algae capable of carrying out photosynthesis, a chemical reaction induced by sunlight that produces living matter and oxygen in the form of gas. 
the success of these new beings flood the primitive atmosphere with oxygen, and great transformations begin to take place on the planet. The oceans fill with algae and aquatic organisms. Huge forests formed, dinosaurs and giant insects. Large deposits of organic matter are accumulating, containing a lot of carbon, which over millennia gave rise to reserves of coal, peat, oil, and natural gas. Water is one of the most fascinating components of the atmosphere. It varies its amount in the air very quickly and is a determining factor in the planet's climate. Water moves all the time through the atmosphere. It rises in the form of steam and descends in the form of rain, storms, and blizzards. But the most impressive phenomena are those that come from the movement of the air over the Earth, such as hurricanes and typhoons. Moving air and water particles generate electricity. With it come lightning and thunder. And then, in silence, one of nature's greatest spectacles. This same air, which shelters the storms, sustains the flight of birds, and a multitude of living organisms. Tiny mites and spores are carried by the winds. They also carry pollen and seeds that will ensure the perpetuation of a large number of plant species. Nature has created various ingenious and sophisticated mechanisms that use the force of the winds, and this has inspired man. Since ancient times, a human dream has been to fly and glide through the thin layer like a bird. From Bartolomeu de Guzman to NASA, man has gradually dominated the air and travelled the world in ever greater distances and conquered faster and faster until he achieves the unusual, being faster than sound. Without the air, there would be no music or anything to listen to. It is through the air that sound propagates in waves that can be very small to the point the human ear doesn't even pick it up. Or so long that their vibrations make the walls tremble. Even an immense solar flare, which is equivalent to the explosion of several atomic bombs, is utterly silent to us. There is no air between the sun and the earth to bring it to our ears. From the air, the sound that nature produces fulfills sophisticated tasks. They work as radars for bats to guide themselves in the darkness of caves. They demarcate territories. They warn of danger. They ask for food. And they can even attract mates. In addition to the information carried by sound, air also transmits chemical information. Flowers can emit honey-like odor to attract bees, or rotting flesh can attract blowflies. All this for pollination. Substances such as pheromones are secreted and transmitted through the air between insects of the same species. It is the safest way for a small insect to find its mate in the breeding season. Scent has varied meanings for animals. It is used to locate food or game, mark territory, 
recognize friends or its owners. And man knew all too well how to make use of this transmission of chemical messages through the air. Since ancient times, mankind has never stopped using the movement of air as a source of energy. Sailing vessels have been used by the Chinese for thousands of years. And today, technology already allows the use of large sails in the traction of ocean liners. From human ingenuity comes a plethora of air-powered machines. The world is now moving towards the generation of electricity by wind farms. Steam engines, as well as gasoline, diesel, and alcohol motors, generate motion because of the expansion of gases in the pistons. But without mixing with the air, there would be no burning of the fuels that drive the engines. It's true, air moves the world. It is not only the energy that man takes from the air. The gases that compose it can be separated for a number of human activities. The most important of all, saving lives. Separating the components of the air requires a lot of technology. First, the air is brought to a liquid state by cooling, up to something close to minus 200 degrees. From then on, gradually raising the temperature, the gases are separated as they reach their boiling point. That of nitrogen is minus 198 degrees. That of argon is 186 degrees, and oxygen minus 183 degrees. Carbon dioxide, widely used in soft drinks, is obtained in the chemical and petrochemical industries. Mankind often forgets that the air is first and foremost a thin layer. and doesn't realize the enormous variety of aggressions that the atmosphere suffers every day. Solid particles and gases of all kinds invade the air. Some pollutants can even alter the ozone layer in the upper stratosphere. With the reduction of ozone, ultraviolet radiation increases, which affects most forms of life and causes an increase in skin disease. Certain gases have the property of trapping the sun's heat in the atmosphere and increasing the Earth's temperature. It's called the greenhouse effect. One of the gases that contribute the most to the greenhouse effect is methane, produced by the decomposition of waste and the digestive system of ruminants. Carbon dioxide, which is essential for life, also causes the planet to warm when in excess. Heat leads to the melting of glaciers and ice caps and causes the sea levels to rise. In some regions, the heat causes an increase in desertification and droughts. In others, intensification of storms and floods. The earth dries up, arid. The thin layer may no longer withstand as many impacts. Without its delicate atmosphere, the earth would again become only a sphere of rock, lifeless. Taking care of our thin layer is first and foremost taking care of our own life.